Nearly every e-bike on the market has one of two kinds of motors, a mid-drive or a hub drive. In this video, we're going to break down the differences and help you decide which would work best for you. Hub drive motors are actually built right into the hub of the wheel. This large black part in the middle of the wheel is the motor. In this design, the motor drives the wheel directly, so the rotational force originates right here in the hub. Allow me to demonstrate. I'm going to tilt the bike off the ground and hit the throttle. Notice that when the rear wheel spins, the chain is sitting still. So hub motors work 100% independently from the standard bike components that you use when you pedal. In fact, you could take the chain completely off and the motor would still drive the wheel without issue. So when you use the motor on a hub drive e-bike, it doesn't matter what gear you're in. High or low, the motor will perform the same. The nature of the hub drive really mellows out the learning curve if you're a first time e-biker. Whether you're starting off, accelerating to top speed, or climbing a hill, there's no shifting required, you just go. All this means that riding a hub drive e-bike is very easy, especially for those who don't have much experience. Since you don't have to think about changing gears, you could say that riding a hub drive e-bike feels like driving a car with an automatic transmission. More accurately though, it's like driving a car without a transmission at all. There's no gearbox, just one single speed ratio. So imagine driving a car using only second gear. It's not going to have as much low end torque to get you moving quickly, and it's going to max out at a lower top speed. This is it. In second gear, you're just not going to go much faster. If you want to go faster, you're going to have to do this. Mid-drive motors, on the other hand, do have a transmission. So while they require a bit more knowledge and awareness, it will outperform an equivalently powered hub drive motor in every way. The mid-drive motor is mounted inside the bike frame between the crank arms. It delivers power to the rear wheel in the same way that your pedaling does, through the chain. This allows the motor to take full advantage of the gears on your bike. Check it out. I have the bike in first gear and I'm going to max out the throttle. If you look at the display, you can see the top speed is 20 kilometers an hour. In this gear, you're going to get the maximum amount of torque, so it's where you need to be to start off. Now in second gear, the top speed is 23 kilometers an hour. I'm going to change all the way up to ninth gear and we'll take another look at the speedometer when we get there. Okay, we're in ninth gear and now we're maxing the bike out. With no weight on the bike, the speedometer is reading 60 kilometers an hour. Now if I were to encounter a hill, I'd want to shift back down to a lower gear where there's more torque. The steeper the hill, the lower the gear you want to be in. Finally, if I'm coming to a stop, I'm going to shift all the way back to first gear so that I'm in the right gear when I start moving again. I'm going to pick up the hub drive bike one more time and we'll see what speed it maxes out at. As you can see, it's maxed out at 39 kilometers an hour. Even though there are gears in this bike, shifting through them has no effect on this whatsoever. So when it comes to performance, the mid-drive motor is superior in every way, but the differences don't stop there. When a mid-drive is used properly with the bike's gears, the motor spends most of the time running at an ideal RPM. This means the motor is gonna last longer and have a lower risk of burning out. However, if the bike's gears aren't used properly, the motor will put a lot of stress on the drivetrain components of the bike, causing them to wear out sooner. So we know how these two kinds of motors work and what areas they excel in, but what do these differences look like in real life situations? To give you a crystal clear picture, Marina and I are going to take these bikes for a little ride. Let's pretend that we work in this office building and we're on our way to one of our favorite places to eat for lunch. On the way, we'll encounter a bridge, long straightaways, and a decent hill. We can choose to ride on either the shared use pathways or the road. Don't think of this as a race, but rather a demonstration of how each bike is best suited to be ridden. Since I'm going to be on the mid-drive with a higher top speed and plenty of power and torque, I'll be riding on the road. My hub drive bike is going to be a bit slower, so I'm going to stick to the shared use pathways because I don't want to hold up any traffic. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. So I'm coming up to the bridge here. I haven't needed to shift yet. I am in a medium gear. Okay, so I'm starting off in a nice easy gear so I can get up to speed. And as I'm gaining speed, I'm also shifting up. So I'm in pedal assist one right now. Alex is blowing past me. I'm gonna take it up to pedal assist level two. I have the bike in pedal assist level five, so the bike is doing most of the work. Now I'm in the top gear. I'm not holding up any traffic behind me. And if you're not in the top gear, you won't get to the top speed because of the gear ratios. As I come up to these people in front of me, I'm gonna brake 
I don't need to gear down. The bike will just do the work for me. Just beside you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Didn't need to shift up or down to slow down or to pick up speed again. And I'm coming up to the hill, so I'm gonna change down so I have more torque for climbing the hill. I'm in about gear three now. And I'm going about 30 kilometers an hour, but I'm putting in basically no effort. I'm just going right up the hill. And we're at the top, that was easy. Now I'm changing back up to pick up some more speed. And we're here. Looks like I'll have to grab a table because I think I beat Marina here. So I'm approaching the hill and I'm gonna see if I can get up to the top without changing gears at all, like I would on a mid-drive. I'll just use my pass and maybe my throttle. So braking again and not even gonna need to switch gears there. We're just gonna take it all the way up here. So I'm gonna take it up to level three. Still pretty easy, haven't needed to shift down. I'm gonna take it up to four. Just cruising right up. That motor is super powerful, helping me up. This hill is quite steep. I usually struggle quite a bit on my normal bike and I feel like I'm barely working. And that was that, super easy. It didn't feel like I was working at all. So now that I'm on a straightaway here, I'm gonna take it up to pedal assist level five, going at about 26 kilometers an hour. Pulling up to our lunch spot, so I'm gonna take that pass level down. Oh, and there's Alex, hey. So as you can see, the riding experience between these two bikes is a fair bit different. On the hub drive, I really didn't have to do many gear changes and it still handled that hill with ease. This makes the riding experience a bit more laid back and easy going. So hub drives are well suited for new or casual e-bike riders. They're also more affordable, so it's a great option if you want to keep some extra cash in your pocket. And mid-drive motors are great for experienced riders who can operate the gears on a bike. I held higher speeds throughout and was able to use the road without holding up any traffic. If you don't have experience with a multi-speed bike, but still want that extra power and torque, don't be intimidated. The gears work just like those on a regular bicycle, so it's very easy to learn. And while a mid-drive model is more expensive, the performance gain is well worth the investment. If you regularly take on big hills and higher speeds, you'll definitely want a mid-drive motor. We hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to us. Our customer experience team is full of folks who love to talk about e-bikes. Thanks for watching. Thank you.